beginning affirmation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be the kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Bless the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Sorry, y'all. Having a little technical difficulties. David's failure to go to battle with his army is compounded by his adultery with Bathsheba and his conspiring to ensure that her husband, one of David's soldiers, meets his death. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all Israel with him. Ravaged the Nights and besieged Rabbah, but David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David was on his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from a roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to hear about the woman. It was reported, this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. So David went, sent messengers to get her, and she came, and he lay with her. Now she appeared herself after her period. Returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent in and pregnant. But David said to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. 
Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house and there he followed him present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of the Lord and go down to his house. When they told David, Uriah did not go down to his house. David said, Uriah, you have journey. not go down to his house. The ark and the Israel and Judah booths. And my Lord of my camping in the open field. Shall I go to my house to eat and to drink and to my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day. On the next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. And in the evening, he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter, he set Uriah in the forefront of the Lahardis fighting and then draw back from him so that he may be struck down and die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray Psalm 14 by that verse. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All the heart of our God, the there is none to be dead. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all. To see the spirit and the word of God. If there is one who can see that everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is one who does good. No, not one. Has they no knowledge of all these evil doers? Do not my people like prayer. Do you not call upon the Lord? See how they tremble with fear. Because God is their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted. But the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of the people, they will rejoice in the joy of the land. May dwell in the hearts of believers at Ephesus, and that they may know the fullness of Christ's love. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I bow my knees before the Father, whom every family in heaven and on earth takes his name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit. And that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the things what is the breadth and the length and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses love, so that you may be filled with the fullness of all the fullness of God. Now to him, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be the glory in the church and the judgment of Jesus Christ to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. And then I see it out. <laughs>
Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd there, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place. So they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The gospel of the Lord. Where can we buy food enough for them to eat? 
Jesus knows what he's going to do, but he wants to prompt Philip and the other disciples to expand their expectations. He is pointing out a situation that is humanly impossible to solve so that they will begin to consider other more divinely inspired options. Next, he prepares everyone to receive the miracle he's about to perform. Have the people recline. They don't have to do much, just take a position of rest and trust. Of course, they may not, that may not be easy when you're hungry and you can't see any food readily available. But that's the way it is with the Lord. Sometimes he asks you to rest and trust in his provision, even when you can't see any possible hope or way out. Finally, he brings the miracle to a close. Gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. Jesus is generous, exceedingly generous, but he is not wasted. A lot was left over, and Jesus wanted to make sure it went to good use. These baskets of food, one for each apostle, were his way of telling us to be equally generous in sharing his blessing. Every gift he gives is meant not just for us, it's meant to shape how we speak and act so that we can become stronger witnesses to his love. Like manna from heaven, Jesus' grace is always showering down on us. May we learn how to receive it and always be ready to offer it to the people around us. Thank you, Jesus, for always giving us what we need. Please show us how to share your blessings with everyone else. One of the things that's going on in the gospel that may help to explain where it talks about uh, when Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force to make him king was that they not only were following him because of the other miracles that he had done, but because those things were signs that the Messiah had come into their midst. And one of the things that the people who were following Jesus wanted more than anything else, but they were really hungry for, was this Messiah to come, this leader who was going to drive out the Romans and make them a great nation again. And to make sure that they had every blessing that God wanted them to have in the first place as his chosen people. And so one day he experienced this miraculous multiplication of loaves and fishes. They're convinced, at least some of them are, very strongly convinced that he's the one. <laughs> Let's go after him. Let's make sure he doesn't get away from us because this is the one we need to lead us into battle. This is the one we need to conquer our enemies and to return to the greatness that we once had under David and under some of the other kings that we had. <coughs> so that's the undercurrent there. And so Jesus makes sure that they can't find him. And then he does this thing that we hear about in the other gospels as well, in Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke of walking on the water out towards the boat. And of course, they think that they're seeing a ghost. And he tells them, it's me. Don't be afraid. Here I am. And when they acknowledge his presence, all of a sudden, they're on the other side. They get right to the target. And this is John's way of trying to tell us that they had to contend not only with the mystery of 
this multiplication of woes and what to do and how to imitate him with the leftovers as the meditation. But also, how can they understand this one who walked out on the water without sinking and then soon he got into the boat? They immediately get to the shore. There's too much going on here for them to grasp right away, but it continues to be a challenge to them, just like the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes was a sign, another sign. And Jesus is going to continue to talk about that and about himself over the next several Sundays when we read from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, getting us to think again about word and about sacrament and about how Christ comes into our midst and why Christ came into our midst and why does he continue to come into our midst? And why it is that his decision was that we should be able to eat his body and drink his blood in this spiritual way that we do by receiving the gifts that he wants to give us. And what does that mean for you and for me as far as becoming more like the one whose presence, whose body, whose blood we take into ourselves time after time in Holy Communion? Because the gift that he gives is meant to transform us more and more into his likeness. And that was the ongoing challenge that the apostles had. All during Jesus' ministry, they had to cope with this. This isn't just a miracle worker. This isn't just a prophet. This one is divine in some way or other. These things couldn't happen. And so, as we go through our own, Christian journey, we're going to be confronted again and again if our minds and our hearts are open to what it is that God still wants to accomplish in us, how he wants to continue to transform us, because that's God's work, is to help us by the power of his love and grace to become more and more Christ-like, that our compassion and our generosity and our loving and our forgiving will become more like Christ's own compassion and loving and giving. It sounds maybe too good to be true, but that's why we have a lifetime. And during that lifetime, are invited to continue to walk this journey with the Lord, that it's not a once and done thing, and that we just mark time and we do one. That we are called to remember that He's the one that's in our midst, that He is with us, and that we can't just presume on our identity as Christians, that we have to be open to grow. That's what happened to David. David became so convinced that he was so good and right that he could do anything he wanted. So when everybody else is going out to battle, he stayed home. And then he gives in to his lust. And then his adultery leads eventually to murder. And he repents, certainly. But the consequences of his actions because he refused to allow God to continue to work in his own life, even though he was the anointed one of God, chosen especially by God to replace Saul. He let all of that kind of stuff go to his head to the point that he just thought he was the be all and the end all that there was. He goes on to do great things, but terrible things happen in his family. That kind of shows what's going to happen with the monarchy 
as it goes on after David and even after his son Solomon. That's why Paul, in the second lesson that is in Ephesians, stresses this renewing you. But he says, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, God may grant you that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. Pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints, all the holy ones of God. What is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That's Christ's goal for you and for me. That we be filled with all God's fullness, his love, his compassion, his mercy, his generosity, and all those other virtues that what we see Jesus doing in the gospel, we are called to do as the apostles were learning that they needed to do in order to be faithful to the one who had called them and who was sharing with them not just his actions, but the very love that drove those actions, the love that came from the Father that he made manifest in his own self because he also was God. This one who is God with us comes to us again today in that little bit of bread and that little bit of wine that we receive in Holy Communion. He comes to us to nourish us, to strengthen us, and again to remind us, as St. Augustine said so many centuries back, 1600 years or more ago, that we are invited to become what we receive, and we are to receive what we are, to receive the body of Christ that we already are by virtue of our baptism, as a pledge and a promise and an invitation to continue to grow into the likeness of Christ as the living members of his body to do the work that he has given us to do, to make him present and to make of this world the gift back to God that God has given us. Let's now stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God. Be God not made of the one being with the Father. All things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became parted from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was there. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to us who believe in the head and his kingdom of the head of the land. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and His Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to our hearts. We believe in one only a Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead. We 
We yearn for the fullness of God that Christ may dwell in us and we in him. We thank you for the gift of life and for our connection with all that you have made. May we delight in your creation and protect it. Fill us with your presence, O oh God, in your mercy, O oh Lord. Hear us. We thank you for your church and its leaders dedicated to the spiritual growth and renewal of humanity through your son, Jesus Christ, especially Justin of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Paula, our bishop select, bishop elect, Mike, our rector, the Scottish Episcopal Church, its primus bishops, clergy, and faithful, congregations of the Waukegan De Deanery, Holy Apostles of Wakanda, Christ Church Waukegan, Our Lady of Guadalupe Waukegan, St. Anne Woodstock, our Companion Diocese of Southeast Mexico and Rank South Sudan, San Andres Veracruz, and St. Bartholomew in Griel. In your mercy, O Lord. Sorry. We thank you for creative, compassionate leaders throughout the world, especially Joseph, President of the United States, and all federal, state, and local officials. May they may all devote themselves to justice, peace, and the common good. In your mercy, O oh Lord. We thank you for the endless and beautiful diversity of humanity, especially those in our heart celebrating birthdays this week. Chris LaRocco and Jack Irwin. Are there others? And those celebrating anniversary this week, anniversaries this week, Marcia Snyder and Wayne Morey and Megan and Brian Crawford. Are there any others? May we recognize and celebrate your image in every person we meet. In your mercy, O oh Lord. We thank you for the promise of your presence in our lives. May our concern for those among us who are hurting bring us to prayer, especially those who have asked for our prayers those who have no one to pray for them. Those affected by war, civil strife, persecution, hunger, and disease. All on our intercessory prayer list, those names found in today's bulletin or the attention books, and any wish to remember now. Remember all those in our country who are suffering because of the extremes of heat and the danger of fires for their protection and relief. Those in Europe suffering because of severe flooding and again for their protection and relief. May our care for them be a healing balm. In your mercy, O oh Lord. Here we, are. we thank you for the gift of new life in this world and the hope of new and everlasting life. We remember those who have died this past week, especially James Hubbs, Miguel Garcia, and those whom we name now. Father Bernard Shaver. May those who have gone before us overflow with the fullness of your never ending love and light. In your mercy, O oh Lord. Yeah. Now we join in the mission prayer found inside the front cover of the book. Loving God, through your grace, guide us, the people of Calvary Episcopal Church, to joyfully carry out our mission. Of growing faith in the first Son of Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may develop a living faith that deepens our understanding of you and strengthens our awareness of the needs of others. May we be in our hands of your life and our prayers and within the community. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God in our neighbor. Mm -hmm. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. We are thought, heard, and believed by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be right in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I will see you. Presenting Bach and Beyond um, at the Marmion Abbey, and that's at 7 30 p.m. There's uh, that's on the back of your bulletin. Uh, Mark Klein, our organist, is one of the participants, so you can uh, go in here and play on a much grander instrument than, than we have here. Uh, also, um, and just to call your attention to the other announcements in today's bulletin and uh, respond to them as you will. Tomorrow evening, uh, because it's the first Monday of the month, not the, the last Monday of the month, I don't even know when it is. The uh, last Monday of the month, tomorrow, we will have um, everything you wanted to know about the church. And we will gather here at church tomorrow night at 7. Unless I hear a huge outcry that you insist on doing it virtually, we'll have it here tomorrow night. Um, any other announcements from the congregation or anyone at home? Father, I just wanted. I just wanted to apologize. We didn't know that our uh, Wi-Fi connection would be so poor out here in the woods or wherever we are. So thanks for sticking with us today. Thank you for your apology. Uh, we're used to the uh, we're used to the anomalies that happen with all of this stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Or something. The woods. We're lucky we had any any luck with you at all today. So. All right then. Yes. Who is this woman that was on the I have no idea. Yeah. 
no idea. I haven't heard anything more about the campus. When did you start? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know. Uh, the altar flowers today are given by the congregation gratitude for the communication ministry volunteers who bring God's message to the parish and the community and for our Zoom program team who faithfully bring the Sunday Eucharist to the world. Frightening thought to know that some of us are available on the World Wide Web uh, for good or for ill. And uh, I've watched myself once or twice. It's a frightening experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> and now the offertory prayer on page 16 of the bulletin. Together, O oh God, who in the self offering of Christ brought to an end the sacrifices of the old law, bless what we bring to your table as you bless the righteous worship of Abel. So that what each of us brings to praise you may advance the salvation of us all through the Saint Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Angels and those who worship you in every age, 
we raise our voices in joyful praise to proclaim the glory of your name.
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts quickly with thanksgiving. <clears throat> In union, blessed Jesus, with the Christian faithful across the world, gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are all participate, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. Since I cannot at this time receive Holy Communion, I pray you come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life fulfilled by your grace. I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and fill my heart and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right happiness. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness and in the power of your gracious might. Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen.
the prayer of the Holy Communion. Let us pray. Lord, be close to us whom you have enriched with the gifts of heaven, and grant that we may make a task for more holy days in the new life, according to the wisdom of God, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thank you. So, <laughs> oh, really? In the office, huh? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. Are you Are you ready? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <And half. laughs> I, 
others have gone already so yeah, yeah deferred my um, and now it's up so i gotta go yeah yeah we're we're planning some in person. Sean has some audits he's going on, and I have conferences starting in October. So, the rest of our organization come back um, September thirteenth. Okay. All right. Well, I'm having internet problems, so I just you want to say hi to everybody, and I'm gonna jump. Hi. So, hi. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, getting much better. Do you ever have